Hello everyone and thank you so much for tuning in to ChasingCinema.com's official YouTube channel. I'm your host Jacob Toronto and today is Movie News Monday where I sit and talk about what's going on in the world of motion picture. However, before I get into that, I just quickly want to remind everyone that on Saturday I did a September TV preview, which I talked about all the television shows that's actually going to be beginning this week. I talked about The Player, I talked about The Scream Queens, I talked about... The Muppets, as well as the Minority Report. So go check out that video. You can find that link in the description box or find it right here. Also, don't forget to check out the three movies that I reviewed last week, which is the Maze Runner, Scorch Trials, which we're going to be talking about in a second, uh, Black Mass, as well as Everest. All those reviews are available again down here in the description box. A great way to never miss a video is to hit that subscribe button right there so you never miss anything going on in this YouTube channel where I upload daily content. First things first, I'm going to be talking about the box office report, one of my favorite things to talk about because I like to see what audiences are going to see, what movie is making what. Is it a profit? Is it not? And that's what I like about the box office report. Well, this weekend, teenagers and young adult fans must have ran to the movie theaters because Maze Runner The Scorch Trials earned $30.3 million, earning its number one spot at the box office this week. Now, the first Maze Runner, which came out last September, earned $32.5 million, so Scorch Trials just fell a little bit short. However, maybe Scorch Trials has the potential of inching out the original global total of $340 million that the first film earned. Number two is Black Mass, the R-rated film in which Johnny Depp plays Irish crime boss Whitey Bulger in South Boston. That film earned $23.3 million, which earned $23.3 million. I'm surprised, really. I honestly thought audiences were going to rush the theater for this movie. Not that I'm surprised that Maze Runner beat it because... Obviously, Maze Runner is a sequel. It has a larger fan base. It not, you know, not being rated R, based on a novel series, young adult, teenagers, the people who are going to movies. Adults don't go to the movies as much as kids do. Um, well, you know, in most cases, I would think, especially when something like that is in the theater. So I'm not too surprised, but not the greatest opening for this movie, but I'm interested in seeing how it does in the long run, opposed to Scarch Trials. Number three, we have The Visit, which earned $11.3 million bringing its total to $42.3 million. Remember, this M. Night Shyamalan picture only cost $5 million to make, so they are laughing their way to the bank at this point. Number four, we have The Perfect Guy, which earned $9.6 million, bringing that total up to $41.3 million. That film was also made for a relatively low budget, but more than The Visit, it was actually made for $12 million. So again, another very successful movie that was not made for very much. And in number five, we have Everest, a movie that I also talked about and reviewed. You can check out that review in the description box below. That movie only released in IMAX screens, though, so that was about 400 and, uh, 545 screens across the country, and it only earned $7.5 million. However, this Friday, the movie will have a ride release, and everyone will be able to see Jason Clark and Jake Hall summit Mount Everest. Next up, we have some news about the upcoming Spider-Man, played by Tom Holland. Now, ever since we heard that they were going to be redoing Spider-Man, we've heard that they want to make it a high school movie, that they want to make Spider-Man young. Well, John Watts, the director of this project, actually finally set the record straight about his age today. Now, there's been a lot of, like I said, there's a lot... A lot of the focus has been on Spider-Man's age, and he's going to be played by Tom Holland, who's 19, and he will be making his first appearance in Captain America Civil War. And earlier this year, it was revealed that this movie wants to be a coming-of-age high school story um, similar to a John Hughes movie, which I think is a very interesting leap. I even said that when I think I talked about that piece of movie news. But this is what John Watts had to say. Quote, I love the idea of making a coming-of-age high school movie. We're really going to see Peter Parker in high school and get deeper into that side of it. He's just 15 now. End quote. Now, that's relatively young, especially for a 19-year-old to play. But you know how movies work. I mean, we've seen that done constantly. And I don't think his age makes that big of a difference. But now I'm, I'm curious, when we have other Spider-Man films and Tom Holland's getting a 21, 22, you know, how are we going to be able to catch him up? Are we just going to jump five years where he's actually that age or is he going to play 19 or are we going to go through the years of high school um because eventually he's going to stop looking like a kid however i'm sure tom holland will be able to pull that off i think that's interesting that they're going to go for such a young age but i am excited to kind of see the quote-unquote john hughes 
connection. Up next, we're going to be talking about some character and plot details for Jurassic World 2, which we was revealed that it is actually the second of a trilogy. On the Jurassic Cast podcast, Trevara opened up about some of these um, characters and themes of the upcoming sequel and had this to say about the planned trilogy. Now the next, I have a lot of reading to do, so bear with me, okay? We looked at this as a trilogy from the very beginning. We designed the whole thing that way, and honestly, the whole trilogy is articulated in Jurassic Park. Jurassic World is all based on Ian Malcolm's quote, You stood on the shoulders of geniuses to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you knew it you had, you packed it and slapped it on plastic al- on a plastic lunchbox, and now you want to sell it. That, to me, is Jurassic World. That's why I had all the product placement that's what it was. So with Jurassic World 2, it's dinosaur and man separated by 65 billion years of evolution have been thrown back into the mix together. How can we know what to expect? Right there, again, he's quoting uh, Ian Malcolm. That's not the exact quote, but you get the idea. And that's why it's exciting the movie did well. I had a beginning, a middle, and end, and it was designed this way. So now we get to play that out. It'll be a different kind of film, and the audience has given us a kind of permission to take us to the next level. And I don't mean in scale. I feel very strongly that this is not more dinosaurs or bigger dinosaurs. It's about using this as a starting point to discover our relationship with these animals and and with animals in general, and the dynamic that was created by bringing them back to life. (coughs) We made Jurassic World with the fans very much in mind, and I'm not going to forget that. But we've seen a lot of dinosaurs chasing people around on an island movies. And I think you guys and general audiences are going to be down to explore where else we could go. Owen is going to be in it. Claire is in it. And neither are going to be in the same place we left them in the first movie. And though Claire is one, of the, is the one who evolves the most over the trilogy, it's her story that mirrors this changing world. Owen has expletive deleted to deal with. They've both opened Pandora's box in Jurassic World, and both of them are responsible for different elements of it. And I think the the way these characters are connected to these circumstances of what's happening, it's different than previous films. It's not let's manufacture a way to get them somewhere. They're embedded into it now in a way that us storytellers are able to keep them involved without feeling contrived. So we learned a lot there, um, including that they're going to be in two different places. We learned that Claire is going to be more of the focus character rather than Owen, though I'm sure Owen's going to play a big part. I mean, Chris Pratt is one of the most ideal movie stars working right now. Um, I really like that he took it back to Jurassic Park and Ian Malcolm's quote. I really, really enjoyed that first part where he was talking about how they slapped it on lunchboxes, and that is exactly what Jurassic World is. It is all about product placement. Um, I am kind of hesitant about to see... Uh, Hesitant to see where this movie's going, uh, where this trilogy's going to go. But they're making money, and they're going to go full scale ahead no matter what. And I have to say that the movie left me in a place where I had a good time, and I'm interested to see where it goes. Though, if you've heard us talk about this movie many times, we asked, where can you go? What can we do? So I'm hoping they bring us something really original and something really different, other than The Lost World, which um, wasn't isn't much different of people on an island getting chased by dinosaurs. So I'm excited to see that. Uh, But that, you can read, of course, more of what Colin Trevorrow had to say on ChasingCinema.com, so make sure to check that out. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up today for Movie News Monday. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Make sure to hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed. Let me know what you think about Spider-Man, the box office port, or what Colin Trevorrow had to say about the Jurassic World 2 down here in the comment section. My favorite part about doing these videos is having that conversation with you. I want to have a dialogue about motion pictures, so let's have it down here, all right? Also, while you're down there, why don't you hit that subscribe button to make sure you never miss an episode, and tune in tomorrow when I do my top five list of the week. I have not decided what my top five list is going to be yet, so you're going to have to just come watch and see what it's about. Ladies and gentlemen, also make sure to check out those reviews as well as my September TV preview down here in the description box. I thank you so much for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jacob Toronto, and please continue chasing cinema. That film earned... I don't have that written down.